Welcome to today's training. I'm Sandy Oseguera, the product manager for Parent Gauge. Today we will be reviewing the reports we have available in Parent Gauge, how to find them within the tool, how to use them effectively, and how they can be used to report on PFCE and CQI efforts. To get to our canned reports, after you've logged into Parent Gauge, you can click on the top menu or the bottom menu, which will give you a list of our two available reports starting with the baseline report. The baseline report can be pulled up as soon as your first interview session has occurred. This report will aggregate all interview questions into one accessible report. You can choose to filter down to a specific child or look at your entire program's results to identify strengths and challenges based on average responses. Once you've selected the baseline report, you'll notice filter options on the left side the filtering capabilities are the same on all reports and allow you to drill down into specific metrics. So for example, you could compare your English to non-English native speakers to identify if there are any messages not getting across based on a language difference. You could also review one center at a time to find if location is playing a role in scores or even filter down to one specific family. Once you've clicked filter, you'll get your desired report results. So now that I'm in my baseline report, we'll start off reviewing some demographic information. It'll show your program name, the centers pulling in based off of your filters, and the number of interviews. That number is a good idea to review as it's gonna help you identify if you're pulling in what you were expecting to. The report scales at the bottom here remind us that the questions were asked using a Likert scale. And then we see our first glimpse of results with the parent and program scales. These scales are summarizing all of the close-ended questions. The parent scale shows the average response to parent-specific questions, and then the program scale averages responses to the follow-up questions where we ask a family how the program impacted each result. In this example, we can see we're getting a 4.0 overall on our parent scale and a couple points higher on the program scale, letting us know that parents are feeling impacted by the program's efforts to include them in, in engagement efforts. Now let's take a look at the meat of the report, the question results. Here we can see questions two through five. You'll notice each question has its average response listed. So when we see question two, I have daily routines with my child. We're getting a 4.5, which tells us that most families are mostly or very much agreeing with this statement. And then when asked if the program helps with that goal, we're getting a four, another mostly letting us know that our parents are feeling pretty confident in their daily routines with their child. Now I'm celebrating the strong responses, but I'm also drawn to my lower score on question five. I know how to help my child meet and play with other children. Here we're getting a three, which is lower than I want, and it looks like parents are seeing that we're making an effort. So this might prompt me to look deeper into this area. To do so, I clicked on the question itself and can see the distribution of my responses. In my example, I have a very small count of responses, and it's really one parent that ranked this question as a not at all. And if I were to click on that response, I can see the list of interviews and identify which families responded with not, not at all and see if there are any barriers that we can help with. You'll have this capability to drill down on each close-ended question. So even with larger subsets of data, you can drill down to identify any trends. So now that we've finished reviewing our baseline report questions, I have an, air, an idea of where our parents are feeling confident and where we can focus our parent engagement efforts. This might prompt me to aim our parent night calendar events or parent curriculum to areas parents told us they're feeling less secure and find ways to make use of the skills and confidence they're feeling in other areas. Now let's dig into our growth report. After multiple interview sessions have occurred, we can review a growth report to measure the change in results from one period to another. This is most often used to measure progress from the middle of the year to the end of the year, to measure our program's impact by the end of the year. This could also be used to compare an interview season from one year to the next to identify other trends. Navigating to this report is the same as the baseline report, but you'll see one key difference in the filter. The filter for the growth report will show two periods of time instead of a start and end date like we saw in the baseline report. Typically, you'll use round one as the earlier or older season and round two as your more current season to view growth. 
All of the other filter capabilities will still apply if you'd like to dig into specific metrics. Now, after you filter down, you'll see some familiar info here. The number of interviews are broken out by the rounds we designated, and you'll see separate scales for each. You'll also notice the legend in the corner, which tells us when we see green, our report has identified a strength. When it shows red, we've detected a challenge. Arrows will appear with significant changes. Borders let us know when questions are paired, and dark borders show a difference in the paired questions. So now let's look at the results for the same questions, two through five. We can see that we're getting two separate averages for each question based on when the interview was conducted. We also have the luck of the report calculating significant changes with a colored arrow. In these results, we can see we're measuring growth in most areas. Most of our parents are gaining more confidence and improving scores, but I see one red arrow on, I know how to help my child meet and play with other children. That's an area where our parents went down a whole point from last year. And in these results, we're also seeing that they're measuring the program impact as lower as well. This might tell me that our parents this year could use more support and opportunities in helping their children connect with others. I might also look for what might have caused that difference. Did any opportunities for connection change? Do we have a lot of turnover this year that might attribute to the disconnect? If we look at other program years around at the same point in time, does that trend continue? In this case, even I might even see how well we're doing in other areas and shift resources. This report helps us identify how parents are feeling and where things are really shifting. And so this ability to identify areas of improvement and then measure growth after concentrating efforts is what makes Parent Gauge a great tool for measuring continuous quality improvement in PFCE efforts. Uh, CQI requires us to evolve by continuously seeking improvement. Our growth report helps us identify strengths and challenges, implement changes, and see how those changes impacted results. Now, both the uh, growth and baseline reports have the ability to print out the report as seen on the screen by selecting the print button in the top left. You'll also see a download button in the top right. This is where you can download the raw data, including all of the open-ended responses. Those are especially important because that's your direct link to feedback from parents in their own words. And that's it for today. If you run into any questions as pulling these reports up for yourself, please reach out to us by selecting contact within Parent Gage to open a ticket or emailing us at parentgage at nhsa.org. Thank you.